Here's a question for you guys. Had there ever been any knives that you loved so much right off of the bat that you knew you needed to have like maybe one safe queen and then one user version of it? What's going on everybody? The Real Sharif M here, aka Manganus Steel, your favorite knife designer, here with another video talking about knives. So nice, I bought twice. Now before we get into that, please drop a, a like on the video, a comment, and if you're new here, absolutely please subscribe. It helps the channel grow, helps get some of my messages out there. And if you already have subscribed, please double check that you still are. If you don't like interact with the channel, sometimes YouTube unsubscribes you. Enough with the YouTube shilling stuff, let's get into it. So here's a question for you guys. Had there ever been any knives that you loved so much right off of the bat that you knew you needed to have like maybe one safe queen and then one user version of it. Well, that happens to me, well, at least eight times. <laughs> so let me kind of give you a rundown on the ones that were in my collection. Now I know eight is a lot, so I'm gonna try to go through these pretty quickly here and let's, let's just get into it. The first one that I ever bought two of was the Spyderco Hanan. This is a now discontinued model designed by Brad Southard, and it is a beautiful little, you know, for me at least, three finger, three and a quarter kind of finger knife, and it has the, um, the compression lock, flipper tab, and actually, believe it or not, this has skiff style bearings inside. Now, I did have two of these before. I did give one to uh, Michael Elmler as like a giveaway for his channel or for him himself uh, to keep. I'm not sure what he did with it. But if you do see some similarities between this and the Grazioso, that's no surprise. This is one of the first knives that I absolutely fell in love with and I still am absolutely in love with. Uh, this is mostly a safe queen right now just because it kind of marks a significant uh, inspiration point for me in terms of design. Uh, but I do still occasionally pull this out and carry it. But this thing is wonderful, smooth G10, titanium bolsters, full titanium all the way through here. Really interesting construction and of course, smooth bearings and compression lock. Absolutely love this and if I could actually replace the one that uh, I gave to Emler, I absolutely would. Next up on the list actually was really interesting because I didn't necessarily plan to get to, but it ended up that way. So a while ago, I really got into and started following Arcane Design. And from his very, very first run of Necronauts, I won this. The version one prototype, which is one of my most treasured possessions in the knife industry. And it is markedly different than the actual production Necronaut. Uh, this was made, if I'm not mistaken, by Riot before he went over to Best Tech for his manufacturing, and it has some very clear, significant differences. I liked this so much that I, again, wanted to kind of keep this as a bit of a safe queen for me, because I was confident that, you know, Israel was going to go places. So I got myself a user. And as you can see, man, I do use this. I've got snail trails all up on it because I do absolutely love this knife. And even now as I'm holding it, it hasn't been in my rotation in a minute. I think it may need to make a return. <laughs> Every time I go back and I start handling this knife, uh, I, I absolutely love it. So this was number two. Number three in the list, and what's interesting is I'm trying to do these in chronological order, uh, but they're kind of not. The one that's going to be the last one is actually even, it goes in between the Sothard and the Necronaut, 
but I'm going to save that one for the very end because that one's kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, but the next one that I really got into was the VLD by Monterey Bay Knives and Brad Carey, or Peter Carey, sorry, <laughs> Peter Carey, love you, bud. Man, this thing is, like, made for my hands. Definitely fits my extra large to double extra large hands. Love the blade shape absolutely useful for how I use a knife and I got it, the the micarta version first because I said oh you know this is going to be a user for me but the more I looked at it the more I kind of yearned for the original carbon fiber one and so I reached out to Sanford over at Monterey Bay Knives and he was able to dig one out for me. And now this one comes out for kind of more dressy occasions, but this guy is a user for me. And believe it or not, actually, I, I tipped it. And so I had to kind of reprofile the edge. And uh, But I, I do use and abuse this thing quite a bit, kind of like that Necronaut, um, because I love it. And it really just oh, fits my hand so well. This is, for me, a perfect knife in a lot of ways. Uh, and I still love, you'll see this, like with the Southard uh, Spyderco, just full length, you know, nice, thick titanium liners. Uh, Love this knife so much. And keeping in line with the Peter Carey, right, uh, I ended up getting this Turbo from MBK, an M390 raindrop carbon fiber, and just all blacked out. And once I got it in hand, I was like, oh man, this is like an even more EDC-able EDC -able version of the VLD, you know, nice broad blade, a little bit thinner, so it's a little bit slicier, same ergo, same, you know, Peter Carey feel that I just said, you know what, I got to do it. I got to get the maroon micarta with the ZDP 189 on there. And this is my carry of the two, actually. The, this, the, the carbon fiber one, save for a little bit more dressy occasions. And this is the one that I'll throw on with jeans or shorts and use and abuse. And man, that ZDP, so sexy, has never been resharpened. I've just dropped up the edge and I can feel it. This thing is just evil dude still to this day just oh still so sharp so sharp such a good knife love peter carey big big fan of his stuff now when we come to the next batch of knives these are a little bit more recent and uh one of them that i've always been a big fan of is ray laconico's Easy E done with Alliance Designs. And I was finally able to get one. They said they were going to reissue these almost exactly the same as they were, but they never did. And they, when they did reissue them, they made like some weird changes to them. Or I don't even know if they actually even officially released them. But this is the one that I fell in love with. And this is classical knife making at its best. Nice, slim, gentleman's carry, full titanium liners, bolster lock here. Doesn't even have a uh, steel lock bar insert, but I have never had even the slightest bit of lock stick on this guy. Never had to uh, send it out to be carbonized, but this is one of my grail knives, believe it or not, actually. And I got this for cheaper than it was sold for new and it was perfect right out of the box so i love this so much particularly the bolster version because as you guys know i'm a bolster guy that <laughs> it came up and i was able to track down one in just the carbon fiber and the titanium so now this guy is even a little bit lighter than the other one and this goes into my regular rotation and 
I love it. I love the blade shape. I love the size. I love the way it handles every single element about this. And it has all of the same qualities, just different materials and slightly different construction than the bolster lock version. But oof, love me a good American Tonto and love me some clean, clean Laconico design language. Now, getting even more recent, <laughs> I got myself an EXO and an EXO. <laughs> I'm a sucker for Riot Burlap Micarta, you guys. I really am. I absolutely love it. And um, I initially bought the drop point version of the EXO, and it's a wonderful knife. Absolutely love it in every single way. But as I used it, I realized I also wanted the American Tonto. So I was able to track one down and man, I, I sizzled it and now I've got both. <laughs> it's really funny because sometimes I, I don't know which is which until I flip them out. But these guys are great knives. If you've been on the fence about picking one of these up, I highly recommend them and check your local laws. They may be legal for you to carry. They're not particularly legal for me to carry here where I live, but I stay out of trouble for the most part. So <laughs> we'll see. Now, my most recent actual uh, So Nice I Got It Twice was the Giant Mouse Ace Nazca. As you guys know, I have been a huge fan of this knife. It is fits my hands beautifully. It's so nice to have a giant mouse that I like that was not manufactured in Italy, right? This was made by uh, OEM, made by Best Tech. They knocked it out of the park. I love the, the clutch lock or access style bar lock. It is snappy. It is strong. It just sucks the knife into the closed position, and it just, I don't know, feels so nice. So when I saw my buddy Terry, shout out to Tactical Terry, was selling his green one, I ended up picking one up. So now I can alternate depending on what I want to carry. And dudes, I love this knife. I really do. And it, what's funny is, is it's kind of like an EDC small version of the VLD for me, you know? Similar sort of sweeping blade profile, as you can see. Nice, little bit thicker than typical uh, handle shape, and just so usable. My thumb fits perfectly on the ramp. I don't know, guys. I just, I dig this one so much, and it's really, really nice. Best Tech and Giant Mouse knock this out of the park. Like I said, so nice, I had to get it twice. <laughs> so now last but not least, and I, I've been motoring through this entire selection uh, to get to this final point, because this one I kind of went a little nuts on. If you guys have watched some of my, or one of my previous videos, one of the single greatest knife makers and designers, in my opinion, has always been Gustavo Cecchini out of Brazil, aka GTC Knives. And he has really been a significant influence upon me that I decided to collect every single production knife that he has ever made. And, well, I've been successful in that. So let me introduce you, if you guys hadn't seen the video before, to the ZT0055. And this thing is a beast of a knife. If you guys have one of these Nazcas, you can see the size difference. This is easily a four inch blade, if I'm not mistaken. And it's super cool. Got micro milling, this crazy design. 
pseudo floating backspacer here and it's got one of the most innovative opening methods ever seen that predates even the Lee Williams kickstop called the SLT or the spring loaded tab. So this guy pulls up, loads up the system and launches the blade out and then it hides right here. So you can choke up as close to the blade as you like and really, really power through. This is a, a true, um, or as close as you're going to get to a Gustavo Cicchini custom for regular knife money. Now, they did three variations of this. And surprise, surprise, I have all three. This all black version, which is super rare, you can never find, like, I've never seen this go on the secondary market. And I'm not sure who did this pattern, whether it was ZT internally or it was him, but from the looks of it, I'm convinced that he's the one that did it. You still have the floating backspacer, the pseudo floating backspacer. It's just blacked out. And then you have the continuation of that pattern on the backside. And just look at that all blacked out. It's so sexy. This thing actually even has a stiffer detent than the silver one, which is kind of crazy because the silver one's pretty stiff too. But I carried the silver one quite a bit. And after I got the black one, I got the bronze and stonewashed black blade version which completed the trifecta. Such a unique design. Again, still floating backspacer, but now black to complement the rest of the black hardware. This is the most subtle, I would say, out of the trio. Now, funny story is I ordered this guy and when I first got it, the detent was not very good on the one that I got. So I sent it back to the company that sold it to me and they did something really crazy. They repaired the detent on the, the one that I had and sent me a new one. So I have four. <laughs> so I wasn't sure what to do because now I have four of these freaking knives. So the the other three became my safe queens and this became my user. I sent it off to Knife Modders in uh, Monterey and I had them do a nice bead blast, media blast on the scales, which gave it just a real nice subtle feeling to it. Kept all of the black hardware floating backspacer as well. Kept the blade, the stonewash black as you can see and potentially here this one does have the lightest detent out of the group and i was okay with that for a user it doesn't need to be you know like insanely strong but yeah this guy was so nice i bought it four times or technically three but got four <laughs>